First of all, I'd, uh, I'd like to express my gratitude to Dallas Safari Club for asking me back again. It is a delight to be with you. As we look around the world today, ladies and gentlemen, it is pretty easy to understand why the global community is looking for leadership. There are circumstances prevailing in the world which suggest that if we do not do something different, different from what we have been doing up to this point in time, the circumstances that will face us as human beings throughout the world, not only in the United States of America, but throughout the world, are going to formulate challenges for human society that up to this point in time we have proven unable to meet. And as somebody who is not an American citizen, as somebody who is not an American citizen, I would like to give you my thoughts on the greatness of America. I think this is particularly important because, as I understand it, this is youth night. This is the time when your organization is attempting to give to the next generation of Americans a sense of idealism, a sense of purpose, and a sense of commitment to the natural resources of your nation and to your society. You have been amongst the most improbable experiments in human history. You were a complete outpost of civilization in the latter part of the 18th century. And you introduced to the world the standards by which nation states throughout this globe on the only planet we have have come to evaluate the progress of their nations. It has become fashionable around the world to denigrate the United States of America, and every American in this room knows it. But the reality is that you gave the world the ideas of popular sovereignty. You gave the world the ideas of unfettered citizenry and the rule of law applied to all equal citizens. You gave the world this. We have come to term it democracy. Whether we call it democracy or liberalism really doesn't make any difference. The fact of the matter is you changed the course of history. And at that seminal moment, you threw up in your midst a college of intellectuals and a pantheon of ideas that was seldom matched in the history of the world. And I know world history well. And these achievements of the United States of America are now recognized throughout the world. And as I have said, every progressive nation state in the world community strives to achieve these objectives in one form or another. But there is another achievement that your nation is responsible for that is equal to these, and yet for which you are not recognized. And not only are you not recognized for it around the world, your own people do not recognize you for it. Ninety-five percent at least of your citizenry 
and the citizenry of Canada, who joined with you in this great adventure, also remain ignorant of this achievement. And I am suggesting to you this evening at this meeting that in addition to your achievements in democracy, in addition to your achievements of the equality of citizens under rule of law, the conservation movement that was launched by a handful of citizens and joined by the majority of progressive Americans in the latter part of the 19th century, formulated and driven by the icons such as Teddy Roosevelt and the Boone and Crockett Club of America, and founded and led and achieved and still driven by the hunters of your nation, should stand as equal to the achievements that you are recognized for. You gave birth, you gave birth in those years to the only continental system of conservation that yet exists in the world. It is the only continental system. Canada and the United States share this system. The American people led this. You were the giants who strode before the rest of the world in this regard. The sustainable use movement that the world entire now regards as fundamental to the conservation of the world's resources and the preservation of progressive societies was launched in your country. How many of you know this? How many of your children know this? How many of your educators know this? The answer to those questions, ladies and gentlemen, is that far too few know it. When America launched the conservation movement led by hunters and anglers in the latter part of the 19th century, you faced enormous odds. There were major, major obstacles in your way. This was not an easy turn of events, any more than independence was an easy turn of events, any more than the establishment of democracy was an easy turn of events. To put wildlife and natural resources at something sacred to the heart of a nation and to understand that it became a symbol of citizenry to protect those resources was an enormous stride in progress for the entire world. Your system of national parks, your system of this extraordinary array of non-governmental organizations that assist in conservation, the funding mechanisms that you have established, the meetings like we are having here this evening, they do not happen around the world, ladies and gentlemen. They do not happen not with the frequency and the intensity and the coordination that your country has given. And every single person in this audience should understand that it is not enough, it is not enough to open your wallet. It is not enough to simply be a member of an organization. What it requires is the same commitment that Teddy Roosevelt gave to your nation for the wildlife resources of your country, which is that heart, soul, and mind must be given to this. And the, you must take this movement and make it central again to the psyche of the United States of America.